Chavre, how are you? I hope you're all gesund, stark, and freilich, begash mis and beruchnis. I hope everyone is strong, healthy, and happy physically and spiritually. The Ebesha should help that all those that need a Yeshua in any area of their lives, they should be helped immediately. This Matzah Shabbos is Slichas. This is the Shabbos Slichas. And we are laning Pashas Netzavim. And next week is the Shabbos Rosh Hashanah. And we always read the Pasha of Netzavim before Rosh Hashanah. So today we are going to talk of the thought of the week for Pashas Netzavim and the connection to Rosh Hashanah. But first, we'll start with the Pasik from the Rebbe's new capital. We spoke about this once before. And that's the Pasik Arev Av which means Hashem guarantee your servant goodness. Al Yashko Nizadim and the wicked should no longer oppress me. So we'll see the connection soon with the idea of guarantee me good. And it's interesting that we say this also before Tkiyas on Rosh Hashanah. This week's Pasha is Pasha's Nitzavim. And it talks about how Moshe tells the Yidin, Atem Nitzav Mayim Kulchem. You're all standing before Hashem. And he gathers all the Jews, the leaders, the scholars, the rabbis, and the laymen, the woodchoppers, and the water drawers. La To enter into a covenant. So it's explained first on the simple level that Moshe Rabbeinu was bringing all the Jews into a covenant for Hashem. But what was the Chiddush? What is the novelty in the covenant in this week's Pasha? It's the Arvus, the covenant of responsibility. One Jew is responsible, has to look out for another Jew. The concept of Arvus. And this is what the Apostle says later in the Pasha, Hanistoros Lashem Melikeinu. When something's happening which is hidden from man's eyes, so therefore the community and others can't take responsibility. But but things that are apparent and obvious in a revealed way on this planet Earth, then man has to take responsibility for what's happening with his fellow. So how is this all connected to Rosh Hashanah? So, the Alter Rebbe explains famously, and it speaks about it in all of Torah's Chassidus Chabad, that Atem Nitzavim Hayyim goes in the day of Rosh Hashanah. That we're standing all firmly before Hashem, on the day of judgment. And what is happening on Rosh Hashanah? We're making a covenant with Hashem. So we have to understand the connection between the simple meaning we were talking about making a covenant for responsibility to one another and this idea of a covenant with Hashem. So let's talk about the concept of a covenant. So Chassidus explains, what does it mean when you make a bond, a covenant, a pact? one with the other. The meaning is, you have two friends. Why do they like each other? Usually, it's connected to circumstances. It's connected to certain conditions. You lived in the same block your whole life. You went to the same school together. You, you were in the same unit in a war. Whatever the story is, you shared experiences. So now, before you're going to part ways, and now the situation between you two is very good, so you want to elevate the love to a level of love that's not an avashat tluya bedavar, that it's not a love which is dependent on something, but that it's going to be forever together. You make a blood brother pact, so to speak. And you say, you know what? Come what may, we're still together forever. You live in Caracas, I live in Pakistan, we're still best friends, etc. So in other words, they're good now, and it's a great time together, the best of times, but they want to make sure that even when it's later, not going to be such good times, still the love will be powerful. So therefore they make the pact. So doing this pact elevates it from a circumstantial love, a conditional love, to an unconditional love. And this is what happens in Rosh Hashanah. We stand before the Eibishter and we reaffirm our vows to Hashem. We tell Hashem, we've been pretty good this month. We prepared ourselves. We love you. We worked hard. 
We made preparations. We're at the best of our behavior. We're dressed in our best. So now we turn to you, Hashem, today on Rosh Hashanah, as we're being judged, that even if in the year to come, I might step out of line, I might not be perfect, please don't forget how I'm standing here today before you and making a pact. I'm all yours. And let us connect on a level of essence to essence. And that's what happens on Rosh Hashanah. We call out with our essence to Hashem. Hashem responds with His essence and it becomes solidified and cemented in the most powerful way that come what may in the future year, it won't take away from the love. Now it's the same thing as we just said, <clears throat> that this is the idea of a pact between friends, right? So now, let's understand what does it mean that one Jew is a guarantor for another Jew? The answer is because we're not strangers. We're really one. And there's a beautiful thought that Chassidus talks about how the word arvus, which means guarantor, orev, has really three meanings, three interpretations. One interpretation is orev, which means guarantor. Another interpretation, orev milosh narevus, which is sweetness, pleasant. And the third, and, and another, another interpretation is orev milosh taruvus, we're mixed, we're interlocked and intertwined. So this is the order. How is it that Jews are responsible one for the other and guarantors? Because really we're at a taruvis. We're mixed. We're one. We're interlocked and intertwined. We're really one unit. What unites us is far greater than what divides us. And therefore, once we realize that we're really one and we're one unit, I'm the right arm, you're the left arm. So then we see the sweetness of one another. Because once you feel the other person is one with you, then the other person becomes pleasant and sweet to you also. So that's the connection between the word arvus, responsibility, and how is it that a Jew could be responsible for another person because it's not another, it's not a stranger, it is really you. And this is the preparation for Rosh Hashanah. Since we want that Hashem should accept our proclamation of reaffirming our vows. So Hashem looks at us and sees how are you treating another person? The way you treat another person, that's how the Ebishtah will treat you. So therefore we learn in this week's Parsha on the Pshat level that we are thinking about someone else. We're looking out for someone else. We care for someone else. We're connected with someone else. We're Kulchem. It's atem nitzav mayim kulchem. We do in this avodah of always being with the people, for the people, thinking about the people and others. And then when it comes Rosh Hashanah, we can make an eternal bond with Hashem that will overlook all of our deficiencies and flaws and reveal the ava atzmas, the essential love between Hashem and Yidin. There's a story one story to think about, connected, that Rabbi Jonathan Sachs says the story many times. He heard a story about the Lubavitcher Rebbe. That somebody wrote to the Lubavitcher Rebbe a letter, and he wrote to the Rebbe, I'm depressed, I am depressed, I am lonely, I feel life is meaningless, I try to learn, but I'm not enthusiastic about it. I'd like to pray, I'd like to pray, but, but, but I don't feel it many times. So the Rebbe gave a brilliant reply without using a single word. Without using a single word. What did the Rebbe do? The Rebbe circled the first word of every sentence that this person had wrote. And what was the first word in every sentence? I. And then he sent back the letter. That was the problem, and that is the solution. We have to, when it comes before Rosh Hashanah, we shouldn't think so much about I, but about us, about we, about ours, ours. If we think in terms of us and we instead of I, then this is the best way, the key for Hashem to accept all our prayers and give us a chaksiva chsimateva, 
Lashon HaTevam Besukah, the Ebishter should help that even before Shabbos, the Ebishter should see our wonderful Achdus in preparing ourselves for this Shabbos, that even before we come to the Shabbos, we should cause that Barcheinu Avinu Kolonu Ke'echad Begula Amitiz Vashleima Take it from a yad, mamish. Posting from my home, Be'ez Hashem Yisbarich, your man in Melbourne.